Good afternoon, Faithfully Fragrant. Hope everybody is having a great day. Just like to come on here real quick. I'm gonna tag some of my buddies so I'm not on here by myself, hopefully. All right. Whew! You guys do not have any idea how nervous this can be if you have not done lives for training people. So, I'm just gonna lollygag for a second because I hate talking to myself like everybody. I feel like I'm just talking to me. But when you hop on, hit say hello, hit replay, or replay if you're watching it later, just so that we know whether you're watching it. Um, just wanted to hop on here and give some quick thoughts about, well, they're not really quick. It's going to be a few minutes because I have a script because I'm long-winded, so I try to keep my talking points going. But I just wanted to share some things that I've shared with my team, and then I've I've expanded on it since then. But for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Michelle Lahr. I am the director of Blessing and Sense team and um, been a director since the end of September. And I've been with Sensi almost for three years. April 25th will be my third year as a consultant. And I really didn't expect it was going to go this far. I joined Sensi so that I could buy Chick-fil-A and Starbucks and not have to answer to my husband. And it became a little bit more. I had a team, I've done direct sales before and I had teams then, so I was not really surprised that I had a team, but I am surprised that I'm in the top three of the company. I've never been that before. I've always been like, you know, one from the bottom. Never been up in an actual leadership, leadership position. So that for me, I didn't believe Chloe or Faith when they said that they expected it to happen because I just like, yeah, why me? But sometimes circumstances make things happen. So, and for those of you that don't know, my job made me choose for the last time between my son and my job. And I chose my son for the first time in my life that I was actually able to because I didn't, I had something I could fall back on and I didn't care about what they did to me anymore. I, I wasn't chained to that paycheck because I knew if I had to go find another job when the circumstances came, I could. And I did this as a star consultant. But my son's health, after you, you only get almost lose a child once before you make it be a priority. And he's 20, so I missed 20 years of this kid's life. But where we took it, everything as a blessing. And I between him and the pandemic, I don't know which one was better for my business, but it was amazing. But enough about me and let's talk about my topic. So are you due for a maintenance check? You're going to see where I'm going with that as I progress through my notes here. But what I want you to think about, most people on here are, well, we're all adults. We're all over 18 or else we couldn't be selling Sensi. But I want you to, many of us drive or we know people that drive or we're married to people that drive and we own cars. So I want you to think about a time when you got a new car, whether it was your first car, your dream car, an upgrade, a new to you car, a brand new car, drove it off the lot with two miles on it. Um, yes, that was my car in my teaser picture. I drove that off the lot with no miles on it. It is my baby. Once it's paid off, wait till my dream that will become even more my dream car. Um, but think about how that made you feel. I mean, it's exciting. It's, you're driving all over the place. You're taking pictures of your car. You're posting pictures of your car. Um, you want to keep it clean. You park it far away from anybody in the parking lot so that nobody dings your doors. And that's the new car mentality. Sometimes you have it for a few months. Sometimes you have it for a few years. Sometimes you have it forever, depending upon your car and your love for cars. And that actually correlates with your business as well. And my husband used to own an auto repair shop, so I have a lot of experience with that. I used to work there for a little while. Don't ever work for your husband, it sucks. Just to put that out there. But anyway, so I was thinking about how that can correlate with your business. 
And my husband had actually said something during one of our conversations that made me think about it even more. And my husband was one of those people where you talk about burning bread in the toaster oven and all of a sudden he relates it to killing somebody. Like, I didn't mean to burn the, didn't mean to burn your dinner. Well, if you killed somebody, you can't say you didn't mean it. And I'm like, what the heck does that have to do with burning bread? My husband's a lunatic. But, you know, sometimes it does correlate. And so that brand new car and that feeling that you have and that excitement is the same thing that you have when you start your business. You're excited, you might be a little scared, you might be a little nervous, but you're super excited about what you're doing, what you can do, you're talking about it all the time, you're sharing it with the world, you're sharing every tiny little ex achievement that you get when you booked your first party, when you got your first recruit, when you um, hit shooting star, you hit sensational start, levels one, two, or three, which I missed all four of those achievements. I actually almost got canceled by Sensi, um, and then I had to pick it up. And to be honest, if I had not picked it up, I don't think I'd be here today. I think I would have been one of those, it didn't work for me people. But, you know, so you have all these achievements and you want to crush these goals and do everything. And then after a while, whether it be three months or six months or two years or three years, it's the same old, same old, just like your car. Now you park in the first spot you can get as close to the grocery store because you don't care if anybody dings up your car because you just want to get in and out of that grocery store and who wants to walk across a, a pollen-filled parking lot? So it's you feel run down, you're stuck. Um, maybe when, you, when I first got my car and pretty much still now, I don't let anybody eat or drink in my car. If you do heaven help you if you spill something but then after a while you just you just don't care anymore you're like yeah whatever there's french fries under the seat who cares like I'm a I'm a kid free zone there's no car seats in my car either I've told people if you got kids and they got a ride they we, we're taking your car I'll sit with your Cheerios because I'm not putting a car seat on my leather seats it's just not happening but you know we're in different states of our life different states of our mindset with our car but at the end of the day whether it's your brand new car or your brand new business, you made an investment in yourself. And it's a lifetime investment. Cars aren't cheap. You know, businesses, yeah, it was $99 if you joined on a full kit. $59 or less if you joined on an Earn -A kit. Either way, there's other things that you probably could have thought to do with that money. And then the time that you've invested and the people that you invested in. So that investment gets more valuable as time goes on and you work your business. So you have to maintain it. And in order to maintain it, you have to take care of your stuff. So I have eight tips to share with you to maintain your business um, and to maintain your business better than most people take care of their cars. And that's something my husband wanted me to make certain that I remind, I said, because there's a lot of people who don't take care of their cars, routine maintenance and cars, people just don't do. So, but these are in no particular order. They're just things that I had thought of. So the first thing, and this is what started this whole thing is when my husband and I were talking about doing trainings and stuff, he said the very word for word, you have to get gas before your tank is empty. And that actually hit me in a way that like he was absolutely right. You have to put gas in your car before it's empty or else you're stranded on the side of the road. So you have to book your parties or follow up with your customers before your well is dry. You can't, and that's one of my, that's one of my hard things. Faith is always talking to me about front loading and it's like the hardest thing for me to do. I'm more of a collect the orders kind of girl. When I front load, thing, people end up in a hospital and I can't do the parties anyway. So, and I think that's a mindset that I have to break over everything that I've gone through and I'm working on it, but I've always been a, let me see what I can do at the spur of the moment. Cause I've either had a job that I couldn't front load and get the time off or somebody ended up in the hospital and it was just my kid or my grandmother or something. And I had to take care of that. But at the end of the day, you still got to find your business. It's not going to come to you. You got to find it. Personal development. You have to keep increasing your well-being, your, your self-worth. Uh, 
this was nerve wracking to try to do this. I had to have a pep talk from my accountability partner today because I didn't think I'm good enough to come on here and talk. Yes, I'm a director. There's directors that are way better than me though. And yes, that's my own opinion because to somebody else, I could be absolutely amazing. I know to my team, I'm pretty amazing, but that's not necessarily how I see myself. So you have to stretch outside those comfort zones. Um, and it goes into professional development too. You got to watch trainings, doing lives. Everybody tries to pour in here. They have stuff to share. And you, every little bit, you never know what that one thing that you could say uh, will help somebody or help yourself because you better believe I'm going to watch this playback after and say, God, I hope I don't sound stupid, but I'm going to get something and hear something and be like, wow, you know, that was amazing, Michelle. Why don't you do that? And then, of course, your rest and your self-care is another way to fill your gas tank. We always hear you can't pour from an empty cup, and that is 100% true. When you are worn down, this is the worst thing for you to try to do, is to try to work this business. So you have to rest and you have to self-care. And that's all ways to fill your gas tank. So you got to find it and find, find what works for you, whether you need the lowest grade fuel or the highest grade fuel. Do what works. My car's bougie. It needs the highest grade, but there is that. So tip number two, preventative maintenance required. Oil changes and tire rotations. You know, you have to maintain your car in order for it to keep going. And routine maintenance, it's not always an immediate issue that you're preventing. So you you do tire rotations to prevent uneven tread wear on your, on your tires. So you turn around and you're consistently engaging with your team, consistently engaging with Sensi in general, um, learning new systems, trying new systems, trying new ways to engage and party and recruit. And to do that, it prevents you from getting, from losing things when you do get stuck because we're all gonna end up in a rut, it's guaranteed. But when you are doing these things consistently, your preventative maintenance, then when you do get stuck in a rut, it's easier to get out. And when you, when you get out, you still have a team. You still have a business. Because sometimes life does happen. And when I was sitting with my son in a hospital for a week, I definitely wasn't engaging as much as I would have what if I wasn't. But things happen. And I still had a business to go back to. And you have to do that care and that preventative maintenance. Uh, tip number three, we hear this all the time, stay in your lane while driving. If you're driving your car and you're not looking where you're going, you know where you're probably going to end up. So if you're constantly comparing your business to someone else's or checking out somebody else's car or checking out somebody else's VIP page or checking out how somebody else is doing all their things, you're going to end up in a ditch. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts because comparison is the thief of joy. And you're going to, when you see people that are doing all these goodie baskets, all these Easter baskets, all these teacher appreciation things, all these Christmas goodie baskets, all these Scentsy Club baskets, and you're not there or you don't have that, my Scentsy Club, it's starting, but it's nowhere near where I wish it was. But it's a work in progress. And those people that you're comparing yourself to, they didn't build it overnight. And we're just seeing the after effects. We didn't see all of the work that they put into it. One of the biggest analogies that I had ever gotten when I was in, direct, in a different direct sales company was if you go to a pond where ducks are swimming, on top of the water, the ducks are so calm and serene and you just think, wow, that's so relaxing. But what you don't see underneath the water is a dog, is that the, the duck's feet are paddling like mad to keep them going. And that's the work that you don't see. That's the behind the scenes stuff. So while you're comparing your business and your journey and your car to everybody else, you don't necessarily know if that's where they're going. I, I could be fixing my car every single day. It might look nice, but it might not be. And that's just the way that it that it looks. And another thing to think about is you wouldn't slash your other three tires just because you got a flat in one. So you got to maintain, stay in your lane, and just keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing will eventually work. You just have to keep 
doing it. That's the consistent part. So tip number four, get out of the ditch and repair your vehicle. It's almost a guarantee that in some point in your business, you're gonna go into a ditch, One, 100%. You're gonna get into a rut. You're just not gonna feel like doing your business. Something's gonna happen. Everything's gonna fall apart. If you're a new leader with a new team and your team is rock stars and then they hit a ditch and then all of a sudden your entire team's not talking to you, you don't even have a team, everybody quit, um, nobody does anything and you gotta start back at square one. But only you can decide if the repairs are a priority to you. But you have to keep in mind, the longer your vehicle sits in the shop, the more expensive the repairs. So if you have a bad day, have a bad day and then get over it the next day. But if you end up making that be a bad week or a bad month or a bad year, it gets more expensive because the longer you're away, the harder it is to come back. So you have customers that forget you sell Sensi. Your business supplies will be outdated. I've had I've seen that happen with teammates. They started, did great. They stopped. The next thing you know, it's a new catalog, and they want to start again. And we're three months into the new catalog, and they have to get everything. So and they're like, "Well, I just got my kit. Yeah, you just got your kit, and you didn't touch it for nine months. I mean, when your team disappears or your team follows a different leader." And now they're not even going to pay attention to you because you're gone with the wind and they don't know if you're here to stay. So they're just going to follow your upline or follow a different leader because they're always on YouTube and always on these pages and they can get training from them. So, you know, why is your team going to going to show up for team meetings when you didn't show up for six months? So you got to remember the cost of your expenses. Uh, tip number five, get your ride detailed so it looks new again. You have to refresh. You can make your vehicle look great and you can make your business refresh too. That's why there's events like SFR, World Tour, monthly team meetings, leadership training, um, YouTube videos that you can watch. So you can your accountability partner, there's so many ways that you can get that excitement back. There's World Tour and SFR are by far, like if you haven't done them, they're way better in person, but online is just as good. Like I'm excited. There's a director training the end of this week that I can't wait for. But even just the YouTube videos, so many of our leaders have YouTube channels that are amazing. And if you need to get something in your business, like when I need my kick, in, my, my kick in the tail, I go and I listen to Chloe or I listen to Chastity. When I need some love and some joy back, I listen to Katie Lassiter or I listen to Faith. If I need some, you know, just some ideas or some excitement because I need that wow factor, I listen to, to Wendy Heath Nugas because she's just, she's so peppy that she's got way too much energy for me, but every once in a while, I just need that little pep back in my step to feed me. But you gotta find what you need and go with that. All right, we're almost done, I promise. Um, tip number six, check the rear view mirror now and then. You do need to reflect on your journey, see where you've been and what worked then and how you can make it work now. So you don't want to stay stuck in the past or you'll veer off into another ditch. So just because it worked back then and it's not working now and you're trying to do the same thing, you might have to reassess or use new material or have a different mindset. But you would want to just go back and see what you were doing. But then make it now. Like home parties, we know we had to stop doing them for a while. I cannot wait to get back into people's houses. So I'm so tired of online stuff. I always hated online stuff. And now I really hate online stuff. But we had to make it work. And home parties are going to be a little bit different too going back. People aren't going to want to do necessarily the same way they did them before. So check your rear view mirror. Tip number seven, calculate your miles per gallon. I know whenever I get a new car, that's the first thing my husband wants to know. How many miles per gallon are we getting? Are we getting anything like what the sticker price, like the, st like the window sticker said? you know, because they give you the highway and the city miles and are we getting close? So when you ch calculate your miles per gallon, you do that with daily tracking, monthly tracking, um, your tasks that are income producing, how much time do you spend? The 80-20 rule, 
Um, if you have a team, 80% on your business, 20% on your team, man, I know I've been doing that backwards for a long time. And my business started really getting stagnant. My business got stagnant to the point where I don't even know where it's coming from because I was putting so much into my team, trying to help my team hit in incentives and achievements and all of that. And I had to scale back and put myself first. And I know I've heard everybody say that, but you got to find it out for yourself. It's to be like, oh yeah, they're right. They actually do know what they're talking about. Amazing how that seems. But calculate how much are you putting into your business as to how much you're getting out of it and see how you're doing, where you can fix it, where you can put your time more efficiently, whether you need to be on cruise control for some things and then start working harder and using that accelerator for others. And then last tip number eight is the most important rule or the most important tip. And that's you need to decide whether Sensi is your project car or your daily driver. And what I mean by that is if you're in the car world, so the a project car is something that you just go tinker with. It's your it's your hobby. It's your car that you're you're fixing for eventually it's going to be fixed. It might not even be running, but you're you play with it when you're in the mood to tinker. And but you're not you're if it never runs, it's okay. You have another car. It's not a big deal. And that hobbyists are amazing. I love my hobbyists, man. Sometimes they work harder than the business builders, but they don't even realize it because they just, they want different things out of it. It's fun for them. And that's amazing, but I can't count on them to be there all the time because they might not be. And then the daily drivers, those are the ones who want this business so bad they can taste it first thing in the morning. And a daily driver, if you have your, your car that you drive everywhere, that needs to be your dependable vehicle because you drive it daily. Therefore, it needs that maintenance. So you need to check your, make certain you stay full of gas, check your rear view mirror, do your routine maintenance, calculate your miles per gallon, and all of those things to keep everything together. So, and... My last thing, and I never close live videos well because I never know what to say, but in closing, what I really wanted you guys to get out of this is that sometimes we just need to reset, but at the end of the day, you were handed the key to your new Sensi vehicle when you clicked that join button, however long ago it was. The scenery changes as you go throughout your business, whether you started like me for Chick-fil-A in Starbucks or you want a lifetime of an income that you can get. It changes. Your why changes. My why has changed so many times. I can't even begin to count. It's not just for Chick-fil-A and Starbucks right now. I can't even tell you the last time I had Starbucks or Chick-fil-A for that matter. But, you know, so the scenery changes. But it's up to you whether you're going to take that key that you were handed. And if you're going to go for a ride and you're gonna see where this business takes you, or if you're just gonna sit in the driveway with your car and your business and say, you know, this stuff smells great, but you're not gonna go and check out that scenery. So take a look and see, are you ready for, are you due for some maintenance? And are you ready to turn that key and go for a drive? Hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday and I'm always here if you need anything. Don't forget, sign up for that warmer of the month if you haven't already because it's going to be amazing.